Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Blue. So inside this box, there's one of my favorite projects, something I'm really proud of. It's my first combat robot model. Now, I love this thing. It's a project from almost seven years ago. And so much of that time is, is still the same, while so much has of course changed. And I think it's time to revive and remake this classic, using everything I've learned and the new tools I have. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Now for this first video, the first step on what is hopefully not too long of a journey, the focus is the main hole. That's what I'm aiming to finish this week. Now, of course, I started this project as always by selecting a few pieces and doing a bit of layout work. My goal here is to match the main aspects of the original model, meeting the same weapons and the same basic configuration. At the same time, I'm focusing on using the best creepies I have in my collection. I really wanted to achieve something special here. So I went through my parts and selected a few pieces I've been saving for a long time. The beauty of working with high quality pieces, meaning parts made from good plastic with perfect straight and parallel lines everywhere, is that putting things together is a breeze. Everything just lines up with very little effort and that's not always the case when you're working with trash. This black box I chose to place on the front of the main hole already had a ton of interesting surface details and textures, features I could use to add even more detail to the overall build. Right here, for instance, instead of covering some of these holes, I decided to glue from the inside an upside down button. That way, it adds an extra layer of intricate detail to the surface of the model. Now, another great benefit of using precise parts is that measurements are also much more reliable. This means I can much more easily design and 3D print custom parts and integrate them with the griblies. That's a big theme here on the channel. The original combat robot had a bit of a trapezoidal shaped body and that's exactly what I'm trying to recreate with this couple of blue shapes. The front of it had some pretty ugly features that I needed to hide, while also finding a way to add this great looking detail piece at the same time. So again, I bust out my caliper and take as many measurements as I can. Then I model a perimeter, just to check if everything lines up and if I got things right, before committing to the final piece. Now, of course, all that care won't prevent me from making something that, even though it lines up perfectly, still looks terrible in real life. But I'm not afraid of throwing things away and starting over. And that's when I looked at a piece that was originally meant for the missile pod and realized it might work better on the front of the robot. So I went back to the computer and using the same perimeter I've made before, I designed some new parts to make that connection. And since I gotten everything right last time, I was confident this next solution would work as well. So then I chose a couple of extra highly detailed parts, aiming to achieve a super menacing look for the front of the robot, and this was the result. What do you think? Next, I needed to cover the bottom, the underside of the body, which I did using a piece of styrene. And then, as nothing is ever lost here on this channel, that same discarded front piece ended up becoming a bottom shape. And let me tell you, it was like it was meant to be there from the very beginning. I 
I made sure that the back was perfectly flat and then using the biggest Lego brick ever I created an attachment point. This robot's body will be segmented into three separate pieces. I glued all of that in place and with that the front portion of the body was finished and yeah I was pretty happy with it. The middle of the main hole is crucial to this project, as it will hold a key element of the design, the Gatling gun. To build it, I chose these two pieces that came in the packaging of my Bambi Lab printer, made of pretty good plastic. And since we're already committing the crime of using real Lego bricks, we might as well keep going for the sake of alignment. And that's just because I needed a quick and precise way to create a gap in between the black shapes, so please forgive me LEGO gods. A piece of styrene takes care of the gap in between the chosen pieces. And another one takes care of the entire top section. Finding the perimeter of this one was pretty easy, since it had such simple geometry. With that, I made this giant part with a gap right in the middle, designed to fit the matching Lego piece. These studs, by the way, were removed using my new favorite tool. Don't worry, I'm being extra careful and going super slow, that video was just sped up. Next, I trimmed off a bit of the next Gribbly, the EXO for the Gathering Gun. Marked on the surface where I want it to be glued. And glued it in place. And then once again I found its perimeter to help me design the next custom parts. This is the technique I used throughout the entire project and honestly it's one of the most helpful ways to combine gribbles and custom made parts. of extra shapes made to match the aesthetics of the existing ones and the middle segment of the main hole was complete and the attachment point was very sturdy. The next segment and another important design element of the original model is the ammo box, the part that feeds the weapon. To attach this next piece, I went with the same idea as before, the Lego brick connection, quick and easy. And that giant shape just needed a bit of cleaning. Now the ammo box itself was a combination of two completely unrelated round parts that somehow had perfectly matching diameters. A couple of extra discs on the bottom of the ammo box just to create some distance. And another custom super detailed frame running all around the perimeter of the last body segment just to make it look cool. Another piece to create an attachment point for the ammo box and this is complete. The 2020 combat robot model had two missile pods and this one will be no different. In my mind those take care of the airborne enemies, while the middle pew pew part handles the ground units. They're made from some printer cartridges combined with custom parts, both in PLA and laser cut in acrylic. Now the only thing left to do is to apply a coat of primer.
let me know in the comments what you think of this remake, the new version of my beloved combat robot. I really feel like I'm off to a great start and I managed to accomplish a lot in just one week, so stay tuned for the next episodes. And if you'd like to support the channel, check the links below. I have a Patreon and a Coffee account and every single donation really helps keep the lights on. And as always, a special thanks for my patrons and thank you for watching.